From Montana's news leader, this is the MTN New News. Good afternoon. Thanks for joining us on the new news. I'm Augusta McDonald in for Diane Parker. Outrage in Wyoming this morning. A man is fined just $250 for torturing an injured wolf, keeping it alive, chained inside a bar with tape over its mouth. MTN's Haley Monaco brings us the details. One small town in Wyoming is making headlines across the nation after photos of a man with a live wolf were released. He was fined for the situation initially, but many are hoping for higher penalties. Many eyes have been on Daniel, Wyoming recently, a town with a population of just over 100 people due to one man's actions on February 29th. A signal needs to be sent that this should never be permitted in a civilized society. Never. Outrage has formed across the nation after this photo was initially released by Wyoming newspaper Cowboy State Daily. He committed an act of cruelty. Later, Wyoming Game and Fish released a video of Cody Roberts of Daniel, Wyoming, kissing the wolf's snout and other footage of the wolf in the Green River Bar. Roberts eventually killed the wolf. I don't care what animal it is, it does not deserve to suffer. Avid hunter from Hardin, Montana, Jerome Vandersloot says he is anti-wolf, but is still sickened by Robert's actions. I can tell you a real hunter would not do anything like that. Roberts was initially fined $250 for possessing a live wild animal. 80% of Wyoming is a predator zone, meaning wolves can be hunted year round without a license or tag. $250 is nothing is not a penalty given the horror of his behavior. Wayne Paselli, the president of Animal Wellness Action, a nonprofit advocating for animal rights, says Roberts needs to face animal cruelty charges. But Wyoming Game and Fish released a statement saying predatory animals are not managed by the department and animal cruelty laws do not apply to predatory animals. Wyoming does make it a felony to engage in malicious mistreatment of animals. That's exactly what occurred here. And uh, I won't settle and I know millions of Americans won't settle for anything less than that. The Sublette County Sheriff's Office is now actively investigating the incident. Me as, you know, a hunter that abides by all the laws, I believe these guys should be made an example of. MTN News did reach out to phone numbers associated with Cody Roberts, but never received a response back. Reporting in Billings for MTN News, I'm Haley Monaco. We now know the name of the Anaconda woman arrested in connection with a deadly domestic violence incident. According to charging documents, Leanne Malcolm faces felony counts of deliberate homicide and tampering with evidence in connection with this case. Court papers accuse Malcolm of stabbing her boyfriend, identified as Daquan Watson, in the chest with a knife in their home at 3 Cherry Street early Wednesday morning. She's also accused of washing that knife, allegedly uh, used in the stabbing, in the dishwasher before police arrived. Malcolm remains jailed. I trust everybody had a wonderful weekend. Now back at it we go. Hopefully Monday has been a good one for you so far. Local forecast coming up, but first I always like to take a look at what's going on across the U.S. before we get into that. Uh, Plains area, also upper Ohio, Ohio Valley, east through the mid-Atlantic states. We got some really wicked weather today. Risk of severe thunderstorms, isolated flash flooding possible. Northern Cascades, northern and central Rockies, eastern Great Basin, moderate to locally heavy snowfall possible over the next couple of days. Area of low pressure down there around Colorado is pumping a bunch of moisture up into the region. Some areas could see some at least strong thunderstorms this afternoon into the evening. We'll take a look at that and we have another system coming out of the northwest bringing more rain and snow in cooler temperatures the next couple of days. A lot of stuff to talk about that. We'll do that coming up. Get your 1040 form ready because it's tax day and if you don't file on time, the IRS will charge you a penalty fee along with interest on whatever you owe. So if you need to file for an extension, you can either mail in that request or fill it out online through the free file program. But you will have to pay your taxes today regardless of the extension. If you can't afford that bill, the government does offer payment plans. You can apply for those on irs.gov. 
Today isn't only the deadline for filing your income tax returns. It's also the last day for Montana property taxpayers to submit an application for assistance programs. The most broadly available program is called the Property Tax Assistance Program or PTAP. To qualify for PTAP, you must own a home in Montana, live in it at least seven months of the year, and have an income within a specific range. Those who are eligible can have their property taxes reduced by up to 80%. Those forms are available online but they must be printed out and mailed in. You can also drop them off at a Department of Revenue field office in your community. Back in the Bozeman area, fire crews were busy over the weekend responding to new blazes. MTN shot this video on a small fire near Montfortin School. Fire crews did say they were able to get it under control fairly quickly. MTN spoke with Central Valley's fire marshal who says, quote, if you're having a controlled burn, to make sure you have a permit, don't leave the fire unattended have a water source nearby and to have a mode of communication if the fire does grow out of control. Fire crews do say if you need them to always give them a call. Chances of controlling the fire are better. It was a nice day to close out the season at Bridger Bowl on Sunday. The ski resort closed for the season uh, yesterday afternoon. It did manage to stay open two weeks longer than expected, even with the below average snowfall. This season, the resort reports that it received around 175 inches of powder compared to their normal 300 inches. Over at Big Sky Resort, the Madison base closed uh, is closed as well for construction on a new lift. You still have a chance to ski at Big Sky. Their closing day is April 28th. Spring is here and that means bears are out looking for food. It also means for the next two months, hunters will be in the field looking for black bears. MTN's Chet Lehman takes a look at some of the requirements that must be met to hunt black bears in Montana. Hunting season usually begins in the fall, but for black bear hunters, they know now is the time for the spring black bear hunt. Uh, there's a few things that black bear hunters need to keep in mind that are unique to black bear hunting. Uh, one is a mandatory harvest uh, reporting requirement. Uh, and so within 48 hours of harvesting a black bear, black bear hunters must call in to report their harvest. Also, for regions 2 through 7 in Montana, black bear hunters must take their carcass to an FWP office within 10 days of harvest. Biologists need to quickly see it and do a little dental work on it. Um, usually what happens is a biologist will, uh, will pull a tooth from that black bear uh, to submit for some age testing. Uh, and that age testing helps us as we put together uh, a picture of how the, the, the overall population is doing for black bears. Hunters in extreme northwest Montana Region 1 need to submit just the tooth. Now check the regulations for the proper process. The big need for black bear hunters is the requirement that they can recognize a black bear versus a grizzly bear. In fact, you have to pass an identification test to be licensed to hunt black bears. When you're in the field, that's a distinction that you have to be able to make every time. Uh, when, you, uh, when you have a bear in your sights, you need to know with absolute certainty if that's a black bear or a grizzly bear. So, uh, so take take extra time uh, to, uh, to, to learn that process uh, and when you're in the field make sure you're absolutely certain uh, that what you're harvesting is, is a black bear. And if you have any, any doubt at all, uh, just don't take the shot, right? Uh, wait for the next one uh, and, uh, and it'll, it'll save you a big headache. As a reminder, that big headache, a potential court appearance. It's still illegal to shoot a grizzly bear in the state of Montana. Near Bozeman, Chet Lehman, MTN News.